right, Melinda, why don't we get started? Alrighty, so hello everybody and welcome. I'm so excited to be here with you all on the first episode of Women Helping Women Succeed. The topic of today's discussion is making a solid plan for 2015. My name is Melinda Schmidt and I'll be acting as your MC for the next hour or so. For our viewing audience, we welcome you and we encourage you to participate in the discussion as much as you wish. Type your questions in the chat box that you'll see on the side of the webinar window. And we've kind of already tested it out, so we know that everybody can do that and we can see that. As we go through Julianne's presentation and the discussion, we'll stop every couple of minutes and do a little Q&A session to catch up on all the questions. Today's topic is both timely and thrilling as we close out 2014 and prepare to take our businesses and professional lives to new heights of prosperity in 2015. It is my very great pleasure to introduce our host for today's webinar. Julianne Price is a strategic business planner who works exclusively with solopreneur women. Julianne's mission for 2015 is to build a community where women can come together to share with and learn from one another. Her core belief is that we cannot be successful when we go it alone. Through collaboration, support, and encouragement of one another, we can all find success. Life truly is a team sport. We also have three guest panelists today to join in our discussion. Leanne Harris comes to us from Richmond, Virginia, where in her day job, she's a business analyst with Berkeley Mid-Atlantic. By night, she offers coaching and help for her overwhelmed and utterly confused clients. Leanne's coaching business is almost two years old, and the challenges she faces right now are how to effectively market her business and find clients without relying on Facebook to do so, and how to get control of all of the ideas swirling around in her head long enough to get some writing done. Here's an interesting tidbit about Leanne. In a previous life, she ran a highly successful dog training business for 13 years, training therapy dog teams. Welcome, Leanne, and thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Our next panelist comes to us from a diva within in Queens Creek, Arizona. Siobhan Green is a life and self-love coach with a mission to inspire women who are passionate and yet unfulfilled and have a desire to see change. Having been in business for three years, Siobhan finds her two greatest challenge to be how to get everything done each day that needs to be done, and how to keep that little voice in her head under control, the one that says, you can't do that. You may not know this about Siobhan, but she was a proud owner of a t-shirt business. She still has the equipment designed t-shirts, though, so if you're ever in need of a souvenir or prize, you know who to talk to. Welcome, Siobhan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Our third panelist is the CEO of Turning Point Coaching Solutions in Nova Scotia, Canada. Susan Carey has seven years of experience developing outdoor retreats and workshops, providing coaching for women over 40 who suffer from self-esteem issues and addiction. You can see some really gorgeous pictures of the outdoor activities she organizes on her website, susancareycoaching.com. Susan has identified her two main business challenges as how to narrow down her message and how to attract the right clients. And what about this for a fun fact? Susan's working on her bucket list and this year she took a polar dip on New Year's Day. Did I mention she's from Canada? <laughs> <laughs> Susan, I'm really happy you're still on this earth so that you can join us on the webinar today. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. <laughs> and Julianne, what do you have for us today? We're really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Great. Well, thank you for the uh, introduction and thank you everyone for being on board here. And thank you to our viewers. Um, as you all know from the email I sent you, this is my first go at this. Um, and one of my goals for 2015 was to do what scares me. So I've had the capability to do a Hangout for quite a while. And at least over a year I bought the software. And so I'm actually committing now to getting out there and doing it. So I have a couple goals for us today. Um, one is to get some great ideas on how to plan for 2015. But the other is to kind of, anybody who's thinking about doing a Hangout, to give you 
kind of a behind the scenes look at what's going on. So Melinda, who just did that uh, fantastic introduction, she's kind of my uh, my go-to person behind the scenes. So she's watching the chat. Um, she's like Oz behind the camera. So she's the one doing all the um, technical work behind the scenes for us. And just to give you a little bit of background on Melinda, since she was nice enough to introduce all of us, Melinda is a virtual assistant, and the name of her business is Ten Seconds Count. And she's been doing this for over a year, and this is a newer part, is to get into a webinar hosting program. So she wrote all the introductions. She contacted um, the guests that I had to get their introductions. Um, she wrote and scripted the outline. So you know, if you're ever if you're on the fence and you're looking like, oh, I want I want to get into this Google Hangout space or the webinar space, definitely reach out to Melinda. Um, we'll give you her contact information at the end. But she's really our Oz here behind the scenes, making sure everything goes okay. So that's a little bit of a peek. Um, and then as we tested this, uh, Leanne was nice enough to be a, a guinea pig while Melinda and I tested this for the first time. And we realized the chat is so delayed. So as you're typing, if we don't respond, it's because there's at least a minute or two delay in what you type and what we see. So we decided to bring on three live guests. So that's where Siobhan, Leanne, and Susan come into the picture so that there's always a dynamic conversation going on while you're chatting and there's that bit of a delay between what we see. So I encourage you throughout this um, chat to share your tips. Um, I'm going to be adding slides live as we're sharing new ideas. So I want this to be um, a think tank, so to speak. Um, on LinkedIn, I, I've been having these great conversations, and I thought we'd take it to the next level where it's a live conversation. So as someone has ideas, other people can build off of it. And I want it to be a bit of a buffet. So you can pick and choose. You know, what are the ideas that you hear? Which ones actually are good for you? Which ones would work for your business? And put together your own planning system for 2015, but to have all these great ideas presented to you in one place where you can kind of pick and choose. So I want this to be very informal. It's more of a, a talk show format rather than a talking head. You know, Once we get through this actual beginning, it's really going to be a give and take between everybody. So it's relaxed. Um, most of you can't talk live to me, so just keep putting things in the chat so that Melinda will be watching that and um, getting your comments live on the air through her voice, but also we'll be able to see them in the chat. So that is kind of a format and an overview. So let's get into it. Um, so I'm going to share my first tip and then turn it over to some of our guests to share some of their tips. So my first tip is, you know, when you make a goal, like it, we all know how to make goals. I mean, most of the people on this call were coaches. We know how to set goals. We know how to do our business. But it's funny when you make a goal, sometimes it just stays in that soft, fuzzy idea stage and never really gets developed. And one of the, the tweaks that I've learned is the languaging that you use around your goal. So there are goals and then there are commitments. And a commitment to me has a very, very different feel. So one of my goals was to give up sugar. And um, I think I was listening to a podcast when he was talking about the difference between goals and commitments. and when I said, am I committed to giving up sugar, there was a big, big, absolutely not from my gut. It was like, no, I'm not really ready to give up sugar. I, and so I thought about it. And commitment to me is an action where a goal can stay as this fuzzy thing like, oh, yeah, I want to give up sugar. But when it was, are you committed to giving up sugar, you know, if I want to be honest with myself, I was like, no, you know, I love having desserts. I love celebrations where there's lots of great treats. Um, so what I became, you know, once I started changing my language, I could start to evaluate if it really was a commitment for me or just something that I felt like I should do. So I almost think of goals as something you should do where a commitment is something you will do. And that made a huge difference in how I shaped my goals for this year um, to look at them as, am I committed to really doing this? Then if so, what are the action steps I'm going to take? So I want to kind of throw it to you guys. Um, so we'll start with Susan. You know, what do you think? You know, what are some of the things that you do to make a goal more real and more actionable for you? And I think we're losing Susan, but I can see her. Can you hear me, Susan? Susan? There, I can hear you. I lost you sorry oh sorry sorry no no I don't think it was it must have been my setup I don't know but I can hear you now okay um, were you able to hear what I was just talking about with the goals versus commitments in the language 
No, I'm sorry. I missed all that. Okay. I was trying. No problem. We'll come back to you in, in just a minute. Um, Leanne, okay. do you have any tips on languaging and things like that? Yeah, for me, if I don't find my why first, um, you know, why do I want that? So, for example, you know, I do diabetes coaching, um, and while we don't give up sugar because you know, <laughs> we need glucose to, to run our brains on, um, you know, it may be things like I need to go exercise more. I should really walk the dogs. And, you know, if my why is because I should, that's, that's probably not a goal that's really going to work out for me well. Right. Um, if my why leads to my values in life, I value a healthy lifestyle. I value well-exercised uh, dogs who are relaxed in the house. Um, you know, that's going to lead to a little bit more of a better commitment. Um, and I think I also have a difference between an overarching goal, which to me might be a, a felt sense, and a, a kind of task-oriented goal where I want to have X amount of blog posts written. Um, I still have to go through what's my why for both both of them, but um, some goals, I, I like the idea of that big audacious goal where you're probably never actually going to reach it, but you're going to get farther than you thought just by attempting it. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting down doing your goal setting, you're saying you start with your why first, right, and then right. you go into it. Right, because you, you set yourself up for a failure if you're um, punishing yourself into a goal, so to speak. Mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you uh, beat yourself into a goal, why well, I need to lose 20 pounds, well, why? Well, because I feel like I'm overweight and I don't fit into my clothes. Well, that's, a, that's kind of a, uh, that's one way to look at it, but if you say I would love to you know, show my best self and my best face to the world, that's more um, aspirational inspirational. Mm -hmm. um, so for me it's it's a little bit more important in that languaging piece you were speaking about to make sure I'm framing it in an inspirational and not a punishing way. Oh I like that so inspirational. Great. And Siobhan, uh, let me see if we can hear you okay. Um, how do you sharpen a goal or how do you make it really clear and concise for you using languaging and, and some of your mindset? Okay, well, I do agree with Leanne and the thought process and uh, changing your, your words to positive. But I also think that, you know, people do um, create affirmations and those are just words. And it, sometimes they're not believable to the person that's creating them or saying them because their situation is not lining up with what they're saying. So I would say for me, I like to put my emotions and, and get them in line with the affirmation so that if my emotions matches with the affirmation then I can create it and then I'm a visual person as well so I do like to create ultimate vision um, whether it be a fortune wheel or a vision board I put my goals and affirmations on the vision board and then I'll put it on display so that I can see it so that I can be reminded of it every day I have it in my closet I have it on my wall by my desk I, and I do it with my children we just create vision boards and then honestly they everything that I've put on a vision board has manifested so I think that that's another way to stay focused on making your goals or desires become reality Mm hmm so tell me a little bit about the you know you make you attach your emotions like how do you actually do that how do you really get your emotions bubbled up I mean do you move your body as you're talking through your affirmations or how do you really get that emotional charge um, I meditate I do uh, yoga poses that I speak with them I am powerful it's certain poses that it just changes your inside how you feel inside it changes your emotions and I try not to focus on the current whatever situation or whatever space I'm in right then and there I don't focus on that I just focus on what I'm trying to create or what my goal is for the future mm -hmm. and that's how you get your emotions to line up with what you want instead of where you are or what you don't want I love that I love the, the idea of the you and the yoga poses um, and it is funny when you put your body in a certain position, it definitely conjures up different emotions. So I, I think that's a great connection to your goals is to feel your goal rather than just have it as a, a um, 
a, a voice in your head and, and the fact that you're making it tangible in another way that you're making it visual so you're feeling it you're making it visual so now it's much more concrete it's not this again fuzzy thing that's out there it's a very concrete thing that you can touch and feel and experience yes that's great so Susan I hope you can hear us are you back with us again I am back with you I can't see the slides but that's okay I think I've managed but I can hear you fine okay good so tell me a little bit, you know, what do you do to really clarify and sharpen your goals when you're setting them? Well, I think I liked what I've heard so far, and I also have a vision board. I find walking is awesome because it seems to, uh, uh, it seems to let me concentrate on my thoughts without uh, distractions from other things that are going on at work or at home. And... Um, Another thing, you know, write down, write them down in a journal with a timeline, but also speaking them out loud to another person seems to really make me feel accountable to myself uh, because left to my own devices, uh, sometimes those can get buried underneath a lot of uh, scary, self-doubting thoughts. So I try to have it out there. Mm -hmm. Great. And I'm seeing over on the, the chat that Leona is saying accountability. Susan, what do you do? I know you said you say, you speak out loud, but are there things that you do to make it accountable too, like Leona's putting out there? Um, well, I have a, I have a coaching uh, session, not a coaching session, but I have a mastermind uh, group, very small mastermind group, and we meet monthly and we set tasks for ourselves and then we check in once a month with that. So that's very useful because we get ourselves all excited and fired up about our goals every month. Uh, and sometimes if it's something personal, like two years ago I did a triathlon and I, I walked because I got arthritis and I put it on my Facebook group and I ended up with two girls joining me with that. So then I you know, I put it out there, and so I went for it with it, and that was another bucket list. So having people keep you accountability, uh, my mastermind partner is really great for that. Is It just, you know, I can work on them myself, but then have somebody expect to know how you're doing with that is, is, is great. That's great. And I think there's another hidden tip right in there is that you're talking about having a bucket list. How many of us actually have a bucket list, and you're working through yours, which I think is awesome, and... Yeah, you know, I don't know, Leanne or Siobhan, how you feel, but I know I don't have a bucket list. Do you, either of you guys have one? I do, and I, I, I just, like, started to create it, and I want to accomplish certain things that I do want to accomplish. And um, someone that I was speaking with recently um, was telling me about an experience that they had skydiving, and oh. they said that it was amazing, and it was something that they never would have imagined themselves doing, and they, it was on the bucket list, and they just went, and, and, and she said, you know what, it was really a great experience, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a bucket list of all of the things that I want to do it before, you know, you only live once, so right. you got to get it. So oh, I, give you credit. I don't know if I could ever skydive. How about you, Leanne? What have, you, have you created a bucket list? I think my bucket list changes every year. Like I said, that bag, that big audacious goal, <laughs> um, I, you know, I put it in the bag, and skydiving will never be one of those. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I do feel like yearly, I, I do try to set those bigger goals to over that, those overarching goals. Um, I feel like I've done a lot of things that I never, ever, ever, if I had to make a bucket list. Um, these things would not have been on my bucket list, but they bring me a deep sense of meaning to my life having done them just because I was open to the spontaneity of it. Um, so I think I kind of keep that seeking circuit open for, hey, would that really bring meaning to my life? Um, and we'll call it, okay, check it off the bucket list. I brought meaning to it. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I see we have a question from Judy um, about your mastermind group and what it comprises. So I'm going to bounce it back to you, Susan. Can you talk a little bit about what you did to create this masterminding group and how that um, how it came together? Well, uh, these are ladies that I, mo for the most part, are ones that I've worked with when I was getting certified. And we were uh, practice partners and so on, and we wanted to keep uh, in touch. 
and uh, so that's just simply how it started. We had and and I had my mentor with us for a while, and I think you can just comprise it of any like-minded individuals who are trying to work along the same path that you are, and you could have it meet you know once a week or whatever we do once a month. Uh, we we're, we're both working. Uh, people. She has a young baby, so we do it once a month, and uh, we do it uh, by freeconferencecall.com, which is probably similar to this. And we talk, and we have goals that we create for the next for the next time, and uh, and then we check in with each other. And it's great. It's it's great. You uh, you get to know people a little bit more personally, and uh, and I think it's it's really great for keeping me on track. That's great. So Thanks. you can, you know, there's lots of information online for that, and you know, you you can make it to fit yourself. And I've seen people invite people by linked or so on. So you know, you can you can decide what you want to do with that and sort of make it fit. Yeah, That's great. Thanks, Susan. Um, and going back to the question from Judy. You know, that's what the Women Helping Women group is all about, is just go out there, put a question out saying, I'd love to have a mastermind group. Can you guys give me some help, give me some guidance, or would you like to participate? So feel free to use that LinkedIn group to um, create a mastermind for yourself and make it work for you and make it be what is what it is that you need. So let's move on to another tip. Uh, uh, Melinda, have I missed anything? How are we doing? No, I don't think that you missed anything. I see all the questions have been answered, and I did have a question about the mastermind group. Mm -hmm. Is is there any credentials involved with starting a mastermind group? I always had the impression that you have to be like a CEO of a company or something. I don't think that's the case at all. I, if maybe if you wanted a really professional business CEO based group, but I don't think there's any credentials. You can just say. Hey, two neighbors are interested in the same thing. Do you want to meet, have a mastermind group, or or whatever it is? There's no, uh, yeah, no. We, you know, it's just what you want, and uh, the people that you know you work together with the people that are also interested to find the best format for that. Interesting. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Great. So again, just keep throwing questions in the chat box, and we will definitely get to them. So my next tip, and I think it goes kind of in line with the bucket list that people are talking about, is you know you have this idea of someday, someday you want to be able to do this, or someday you'd love to achieve this. And a lot of times, you know, I find that when I'm writing my goals, they have absolutely nothing to do with that someday lifestyle that I want to be at. And so I've trained myself to look at you know where is it I'm heading, you know, long term. Even if I don't have, I know whether it's going to be you know ten years or five years. If I don't have that defined. I still know that someday there's some things I want to do, and I, when I'm setting my goals now, I can look back and, and say, okay, let's work backwards from that. What can I be doing this year that's going to set the stage for that someday goal of mine? Um, so someday I want to be able to do you know, very intense weekend retreats, and so what I'm doing is as I'm, right now I have a one-day, um, like six-hour boot camp that I do. So as I'm writing the boot camp, I'm like, okay, that's six hours of this great retreat that I want to do so now I need to start working on what would be section two of this and so over time I'll be building that that retreat in my day-to-day -day business but I'll be build, building it in small pieces so I'm using that as working towards my someday goal but grounding it in my actual activities and actions for this year so I'm gonna kinda of bounce it to Leanne on this one um, what you know? Do you have a system like that where you're looking at the big picture and working backwards and putting that into your 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 goals for this year, so that's leading towards the, that? I know you talked about being open to opportunities as they arise, but what about some more planned opportunities for that that bigger that big hairy audacious goal that you've got out there? I think for me, it sounds nebulous, but to me, it's very clear. I know many people are, you know, they have a thing they want to do. They want to. Um, I'm still stuck on this jumping out of a plane thing. They want to go um, see the Grand Canyon. They want to travel Europe. Um, I think for me it was set very early in my life personally. Um, it's more about for me being the flexible person throughout all of my decades. Um, what I find is a, is a lot of times I'll speak to women and their someday lifestyle um, like you said, they may not be making steps towards it, but there's a sense of, oh, well, I have time. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, that Mamie out on the internet, 
Um, they occurred it to Buddha, but I, I don't think it's actually there. Um, your biggest mistake is you think you have time. Um, so for me, it really comes down to a matter of what am I doing today to be the kind of person that I really want to be. And when I was 20, I had some fantastic, inspirational, wise, compassionate women I looked up to. Um, and I also had some very um, sad and painful women that I wished I could I could help even at that age. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, being that, that wise old crone is something I aspire to. I don't know what that looks like yet. Um, I did just turn a zero, you know, a 20, <laughs> a 30, a 40, a 50. Um, and so for me, that comes up every decade. Am I still reaching towards that, the old crone um, type of persona that I admire and respect? Um, and she may just live in a regular house in a regular neighborhood. It may not be a lifestyle. It's it's a style of who I want to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're doing your day-to-day -day activities, um, you know, is there anything specific that you're doing to build your your persona as this wise woman? Keeping up a mindfulness practice, I guess if you had to pick a thing I would want to do is like a month or three month long meditation retreat. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all in service of the minute to minute, moment to moment awareness that I try to practice during my day and my life now. Mm -hmm. Great. And Siobhan, I'm going to hop over to you and I see that you're muted so hopefully you can unmute. Um, yeah, what what's how are you working towards whatever that someday lifestyle is? You know, with your vision boards, I love that you have a track record. So, what are you doing to build towards that um that someday lifestyle? For me, um, again, I do. I'm a visual person, so I do utilize my vision boards. But over just speaking with uh, women and clients, and seeing that they have all of these visions or this someday lifestyle that they want but they tend to put everything else before that whether it be husbands children a lot of things businesses they put all of that stuff before that and so I've learned that you have to fly which is to first love yourself and put yourself in the mix and what is it that you want to do and focus on your desires what whatever they may be and again visualize it for me, from the place that I've come from to now, it's it's funny to me because it, it it all it all came about from visualization and speaking affirmations. And my children, they say, um, "Is this delusional or is this real?" I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's real, and it's gonna become real. So they have over the years gotten to the point where they're my son told me, he said, um, when I go to school, I'm going to print all of this stuff because I need to put some stuff on a vision board because I need to manifest it. And I was just like, wow, that's the same one who said, um, are you delusional? Is this delusional or is this for real? So it does help and it does work. And them seeing the actual things happen and manifest, it it makes them believers to where they want to do it as well. So I would say definitely vision and definitely get your inner thoughts to where they line up with what you want to do in life and start making goals and steps towards that. I say take the first step and then everything else will fall into place. Right, that's great. And again, I love that visual. I'm learning to embrace that side of myself much more. I used to make lists, but now my lists are becoming post-its all over the place and I I find that I, I get more done than I did when I just had one long laundry list. I, I like having that bigger visual appeal of what I have to get done this week. And as I'm getting stuff done, I see there's less post-its. And so yeah, I, I, actually, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say it's actually like what Suzanne said as far as accountability. If you don't have a mastermind group or if you don't have um, a Facebook group or somebody to say hey this is what I want to do because I know that once I put it out there it's it's evident that it's going to get done no no matter what I'm going to do everything possible to make it happen because I said it and people are 
hold me accountable. So if you can't get the group to hold you accountable, then you can hold yourself accountable by seeing your post-its and then they start dwindling. That's accountability and it's mm -hmm. accountability if you don't have anyone that's there to hold you accountable for what you want. Right, that's great. Thank you. And Susan, we're going to jump over to you. Um, so what tips, you know, when you have that someday goal, you're actually checking them off that list. So tell us a little bit about how do you uh, get through those, you know, how do you get your someday goals planned out so that you're actually doing them? Well, when I'm thinking about what everybody said, I'm realizing that I am more of an impetuous person. And <laughs> when I make my mind up, I do it. Uh, I do it. Uh, un unless I'm really scared of it and then I just sort of bury it under because <laughs> you know I did my first woman's recovery retreat and I had this little God voice on my head saying a woman's retreat a woman's retreat and that went on for a year or so so finally I said alright I give up and I started looking for resources and they were all right there and so I did one that year so that's sort of how I work but I also want to write a book and I've had that whisper in my head for years and I don't really tell anybody that like a mm -hmm. few close friends will poke me at it so that is maybe the thing that I should put out there this year and then start, you know, if I put it out there that I'm accountable, mm -hmm. right? Right. Whether it's, you know, so that's, that's what I have to do. I, I have to make myself accountable and not bury it so that I can let my fear of whatever, I don't know what, what it is because I've had, you know, articles published and, and so on and so I know I can do some writing but there's a fear there and it keeps me, it makes me want to keep it buried. So I have to put it out there, not just privately to myself, but to someone else who's going to hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. So does your mastermind know about the book or no? She doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she will next month, okay? Okay, all right. Good. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you know, and that that's true. That's you know, going back to my I do something you're afraid of this year is one of my goals. So I've started to tell people that, you know, I want to have this this retreat, even though I'm terrified of having to financially commit, you know, what if I don't get the people, you know, I want to do this retreat, but I got to book a hotel, and what if they don't come? So you, fear is the huge factor, and I think, you know, I love that your suggestion of, you know, I, you just do it, and you'll figure it out later, but just kind of jump in there, you know, jump in the water, and you'll figure it out. So just start writing, and whatever comes, comes, and if it doesn't come, it'll come next week. Exactly. Just and you hear this all the time. Writers write. People who do things do things. They don't just talk about it. They do it. Right. So yeah. Right. Thanks for the little pinch there. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I even wrote it down, so now I'm on you. So if you're masterminding, okay. then I'm going to be good. Uh, Melinda, anything I missed on that? No, not at all. I wanted to point out that Marcy shared a link. You can see it in the chat column there. Dan Miller has a training on Udemy for starting your own mastermind group. Awesome. So that's very interesting. Thank you very much for sharing that, Marcy. I did want to comment on the conversation so far that started out with setting goals or building commitments and worked our way towards working back from a Sunday someday goal. And I just wanted to tie them together with a question. When you create a someday lifestyle for yourself, how do you how do you create that someday lifestyle for yourself and how do you grow the emotional attachment to it so that you can change it into a commitment okay uh, does anyone want to take that from the panel I I'll uh, speak to a few words one of the the um, one of the workshops that I worked on on my last retreat uh, and I and I actually talked to a friend about this because I was scared that it would be offensive but I asked them to think about writing their own eulogy and and that sounds morbid but what I have found when I listen to people speak about people who are gone then you know they say these wonderful things and I want to make sure that I have n not maybe been a superpower but led a worthwhile life so if I think about that seriously then I can cut out a lot of not all the junk, not all the TV watching and stuff like that, but I can work to make sure that a lot of my time is more meaningful. And I'm sorry if that's offensive. <laughs> not at all, no. I think that's great. Um, Siobhan, how about you? Uh, um, I Again, I'm, I'm very visual. I do the vision board thing. As far as bringing those emotions into 
making it a reality, I would say speak it and again change those negative thought process, th change the negative thinking because we are our own worst critics and we can talk ourselves out of anything. And I, I think I shared with um, Melinda that that was one of the one of the things that I dealt with, which was that inner voice that says. You can't do that, or um, no, you, that's too much. You can't. So instead of focusing, having that that inner voice change to say you can, and you will, and just keep focusing focusing on that and taking the first step. And once you take the first step, it's unbelievable how everything else just rolls into manifesting it into your just making your desire the reality. And that's actually what I focus on. That's what my business is built around it's turning your desires into reality and the main thing is to to let go of the ants which is all or any negative thoughts and change it to what you want to become that's great I, I love that uh, and I want to bounce over to Leanne how about you um, I'm not a visual person I've had to train myself I'm a little bit more naturally kinesthetic and definitely audio however um, you know, a lot of people can relate. And for me, I think what it helps if they have an over overarching picture, um, you know, maybe it's a nice house, a better job, um, whatever it is, what I kind of ask them to do is, is think of it like a Monet painting or take different um, stones, different colored stones, and what would make up that painting? If you had each stone was that task, say it's, you know, read a self-development book, hire a coach, um, some tiny, tiny task, and break each of those down. If it's hire a coach, it's search for coaches, gather a list, evaluate. Break it down to its absolute smallest slice, and that's going to make up your mosaic of your ultimate lifestyle, uh, your someday lifestyle, but all those pieces can be broken down. Um, and I think that really is, not to kind of plug coaching, but since we're all coaches, um, <laughs> that I think that's the big uh, advantage with using coaching is we're going to keep slicing the behavior and slicing the tasks so that they're very manageable. Um, and you could draw a line from exactly here to there without any of the large leaps. Um, and since we were talking about the thoughts and do the thoughts get in the way, um, I am actually trained in acceptance and commitment therapy for as my coaching model. And so what we really focus on is you could have the thoughts, I'm afraid, this is scary. And they go along with you. They don't stand in front of you anymore. They stand by your side as you walk towards um, the goal and the someday lifestyle that you wish to have. So they, they kind of help you along because they, they serve as a guide. You know, make sure you're following your steps, make sure you follow it up, but they don't stop you. No, that's great. And I think you, I was having a conversation with some women yesterday, and the things that have happened in your past were there for a reason, and they've made you who you are. So, yes, to have them walk along with you to where you're going is, I think, another, that's very insightful, is that you don't need to apologize for your past. Mm -hmm. Make it your friend and go with you. Um, and anybody on the chat box, if you want to um, type in some answers to Melinda's question as well, please go ahead and do that. Um, I think my one take to wanting that someday lifestyle is um, something I picked up from the book, uh, Take the Stairs. And it was, you know, short-term pain for long-term gain. So, yes, yeah, short-term I'm going to be afraid, or short-term I'd rather not do something. Like maybe I'd rather say I don't want to work on my book today but I'll do it tomorrow <laughs> it's that short term pain just, just do it just get started because in the long term you know that's what you're going for it and you always hear about these people with um, you know how they were you know this overnight success and they made so much money and you're looking at their lifestyle and oh I would love that they didn't get that overnight they worked like crazy they worked their butts off and so they had pain to get to that lifestyle to get to where you want to go it's going to take some short-term pain and short-term might be a year, might be many years, but the long-term benefit of that, so the being committed to that for the long-term is going to pay off and it's just, you have to keep being focused on that someday lifestyle. Don't, don't pressure yourself with a time frame if it doesn't work for you, but just be like, you know, I have a choice to make right now. I can either work on my business or I can go watch TV. Which, which one's going to be a short-term pain to get me to that long-term gain? Watching TV is going to do nothing for me, and tomorrow I've forgotten I even watched it. 
where if I took that hour and I wrote or I took that hour and I made some phone calls, it's going to step me closer to my goal. So I found that that's a, a good immediate decision factor to keep you committed, keep you uh, on task with your goals is just take it minute by minute, minute, by minute and make those um, smart choices. So thank you for the, co the question on that, Melinda. Um, so let's Certainly. move on. Thanks. Let's now move before on. we oh, okay, before go ahead. move on, if you don't mind, Sandra suggests that another one is to write a speech to give at your 70th birthday party. Hmm, that's uh, good. Le Liana says that she's done that and it is empowering. Uh, Marcy, Marcy likes your positive focus, Siobhan. And um, she also likes the book suggestion, Julianne. Great. Yeah, that's a, an interesting book, Take the Stairs. Um, I had to kind of read it twice because the first time I was, I got some of it, but I had to go back and pick up some other things. And so it, it's definitely a, a very good book. And I think it's Rory Baden, maybe. I, I don't remember the author's name off the top of my head, but um, it was a very good book. All right, so let's move on to um, the one thing that I think, I don't know, maybe it's just my personal bugaboo, but... I think a lot of us with the type A personality is we tend to overcomplicate and make these grandiose goals and really have like 20 goals going on and so one of the, the strategies or tips I have is to simplify, to drill down to what is that one thing that you want to focus on this year and understand that there are a lot of parts to that one thing but what is that one big goal that you want to get done. So for me this year it's to really launch this membership community really get the, I call it like a sisterhood almost, of women who really just support each other. You know, we're not competing, we're collaborating, we're helping each other get to our goals. So that's my one thing, and yes, there are a lot of moving parts that will help that, but everything, you know, as I decide what things to do and what things not to do, I can keep looking at this overarching goal and saying, well, is it part of this one thing? Will it lead toward this one thing, or is it a complete distraction? And I found that that's helping me simplify because I do get, you know, I have shiny object syndrome. <laughs> I love, you know, I see like, ooh, that's a great new tool. Should I try it? And I, I you know, I love when people put out courses. And I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. I'd love to learn that. But now I have this kind of way of filtering, I guess, some of that information to say, does it lead towards my one big goal for this year, that that membership community that I want? And if it doesn't, then okay, it's interesting, it's nice, but I don't need it right now. So I guess I'm using a simplify filter, but I want to throw it to you guys to say, how do you filter, you know, how do you pick goals that you're not going too overboard because it's just a tendency, you know, you have a health goal, but now you have five health goals, and you have a lifestyle goal, but now there's six of them, and you want to work with your husband, and you want to work with your kids, and now you want to build your business, and I think we suffer from great ideas and all of a sudden it starts to really clutter up our life. So I want to throw it to you, Susan, as to, you know, how can you, how do you manage your goals so they don't overburden you? Well, um, to be honest, that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to learning more about at this webinar because I, I, uh, I tend to have a lot of ideas and I, and I used to want to work on them, but as I said when Melinda was asking me some questions for the uh, for the bio, I want to narrow down my message that so that that is a concise message that I can send out in you know my workshops, my retreats, any programs that I offer outside of coaching. But in those things, I want one message, and so my goal is to narrow down that message, and then everything will come from that. Okay, great. So let's uh, let's bring some more ideas or down around that. I see Leanne shaking her head. So Leanne, we're going to pop over to you. Um, what would you say to Susan here, to, and, to, and to me and to everybody, is how would we focus and get narrowed down to one message? Well, apparently we need a mastermind group because that's where I am <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, I, I, this has been a real hard one because I too have shiny thing syndrome. <laughs> um, and I have many talents as a business analyst. My job is to look at a massive pile of chaos and make it clear. Um, and I do it in my coaching as well. And I also used to be an ex-web developer. And oh. I also did dog training. <laughs> Um, so for me, that quest, it's really become a quest to find the red thread that ties everything together. Um, I have to say maybe, I had a dream last night, to be really honest, and it clicked with me this morning, finally, um, 
kind of this unifying this unifying sense that I'm trying to bring into with all of these things. Um, and I'm working on the languaging for it. Right now it's still very awkward and, huh? Um, <laughs> but that's why I think a mastermind or, or I think a lot of coaches because I've talked to a couple of women and, and um, especially my ICF chapter. And they're doing this and doing that and I'm a this, I'm a that and we, we have <laughs> these labels but we can't always see for ourselves what the red thread between these labels are. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, I love that term. And, and I agree because I think as coaches, it's one thing that we all need is we all need a coach because you can't see yourself. No. I, if you can, if, that, if there's a coach who can see yourself, I want to meet her or him. <laughs> So I think that's something we can definitely make happen. Um, so I'll put that in the Women Helping Women group on LinkedIn, and we'll see if we can get that kind of a focus mastermind going where we can all help each other get clear on that. But let me jump over to Siobhan and see um, what, you know, is this something that you struggle with too, or have you found a way to, to really clarify and get your message simple and have that one overarching goal for the year? You know, I did. I used to struggle with it. I can say that um, I'm, I'm getting better at it. I, I agree with what you said as far as simplify. What I do is I focus on the one thing that I want to accomplish. I take the first step and everything else leads to the big goal. I try to have patience. I definitely stay persistent at what it is and I commit myself to that one thing that I want. To say for 2015, I um I kind of like the ma the mastermind thing, uh the sisterhood. So I did um set out to create a a boot camp that's five weeks and it's a a stay fly, which is to learn to first love yourself and and then once you do that, everything else you can you can achieve. Once you put your mind to it and you believe that you can achieve it, you can. And so over the five weeks, I wanted to, to keep repeating every five weeks so I can get a community of women that will support each other and hold each other accountable for the goals that they want to set so that they can make those things a reality in their life. But first and foremost, pick the one goal that you want to achieve. Take the first step. Stay persistent and be patient and believe that it's going to be achieved. Great, right? I think that that's a great um, suggestion you know, or tip is you know, the belief that comes with it because a lot of times if you believe you're going to stay confused, you are. And yeah. if you believe you're going to find clarity, you will. Uh -huh. So I think that that's a big piece. Uh, Melinda, I see a lot going on in the chat. Yes. What's going on over there? I was going to bring that up. We have a lot of contributions to this particular topic. Sandy uses the visual for solution-focused practice, which is her perfect future at the top of the stairs, and leading up to it on the different stairs with a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being a low vibration and 10 being a high vibration closer to her goals. Her vision board has her preferred life goal, and every day she has to do one thing, either health, career, exercise, or such towards her goal. She also needs to work on simplifying down to one thing because she loves taking classes too and learning, but then she <laughs> finds herself going in way too many directions. And Sandy, mm. I'm right there with you on that one. <laughs> Judy is from the business world. As a former executive director, we create a mission statement and all policy programs, etc., have to support the mission and be consistent with the mission. In your personal life, I believe, or Judy believes, that she can. we can create a life mission statement for ourselves. And then Leona had a question, what about money for coaching support in the beginning? Leona, I'm not entirely sure what you're trying to ask for in that question. Can you clarify? And, and keep in mind, Leona, that it takes us a while to see your, your response. So if, um, we're going to move on, but then we're going to come back to that because it does take a while for the chat to catch up. Um, so moving on to from simplifying is you know, when you're setting your goals to think about what tools do you need because again you might set a goal and then feel completely um, what's the word I'm looking for you just completely overwhelmed that I have no way to achieve this goal I don't have the knowledge I need so you kind of put on the back burner you stay away from it and if you just take the time to think about well what is it that I need is there technology that I need are there people that can help me and that's a huge one and that's what I'm all about is reaching out to other people and saying can you help me on it 
and are you tracking so that you're moving towards your goal? Because if you feel overwhelmed, but you put it into smaller pieces, you can start moving towards that goal. You can start to see the progress. You know, and again, going back to Siobhan's idea you know, of being visual, that's what I find that these post-it notes do for me. Like if I put up a ton of them, they feel overwhelming. But as I start to see that I'm pulling them off and I'm getting them done, then I can start to feel like I'm making progress and it encourages you. And again, using Siobhan's idea that you know, once her family started to see that the vision board was working, they bought into it more and more and they got more and more excited about it. Well, you can create that same thing for you in any way that you want as long as you, you know, as by using that tracking your progress thing. So I think that the first thing you always should do is reach out to the people. This, the social media lifestyle that we live right now lends itself to collaboration in such a way that why would you not reach out and just start asking questions and find the right places where you can be you know I understand that you have a public face and you need to be professional and you need to have your coaching hat on in the public world but find groups that you can be behind the scenes again like what we're doing today is a little bit you know the behind the scenes so find places where you can be less than perfect where you can be vulnerable hmm. and say help I don't know how to do this or you know how do I get started what and people will give you the, the suggestions, the tools, the links. They'll help you get where you need to go. So I find that collaboration is probably the first step in getting your getting the step towards your goals. So let me uh, jump over to Siobhan on this one. You know, um, how how do you start to assemble the things that you knew you need to get to your goals? Well, the first thing I have to do is tackle my mindset. I have to get my mind in order and focused because, again that inner voice that speaks to say no you can't do that I have to put my mindset and say this is what I want to do and there's nothing that's going to stand in the way and I would also suggest a, a coach or a guide because I remember at at one point where I was just lost and I just didn't know and I was asking myself questions like why 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 mm. and then I got a coach that can guide me sort of kind of what Leanne said when she said you can't see yourself if I if you could see yourself then you would know but somebody else that looks in they can see what's going on what's holding you back I would say that self is the biggest thing that stands in the way of anything so I would definitely say get a, co a coach or a group to be accountable and then again be vulnerable open up to say I need help this is what I have I struggle with this I definitely need help I use a lot of self-help books I read a lot I read Napoleon Hill James mm -hmm. Allen the power the secret all those things to keep you in the four agreements is one of my favorites one of those things that keep you in line and keep you with um, the mindset mm -hmm. and being under control Great. So mindset's a big tool and motivation too with those books helping you with that. Um, Susan, how about you? So the question was how do I know what tools I need to complete my goal? Or how do you, how do you assemble what you need to, to do your goal? Whether it's tools, people, knowledge, mot mindset as Siobhan said. You know, how do you first start tackling? You've got this goal. How do you start to break it down into something you can do? Well, I think that I sort of uh, take a trip in my mind from beginning to end and or even from the end back to the beginning to sort of see what I would need at each stage mm -hmm. uh, sort of plan it out even though I'm spontaneous and jumping in I try to be thorough in saying okay I'm gonna need this this and this or I'm gonna need to have these people in place or I need this to help me through it and just sort of have an overview look through it and then and then I know to it's breaking it down but I sort of know what and I can sort of keep track of that I can sort of go back to that let's say if I got am I not am I on track with this am I on track with that mm -hmm. so that's how I sort of figure out what I might need to get to the goal mm -hmm. and when I can when I need to put it in place right that's great that's great because you know we're, we're good at planning so you have to plan it and then you have to take action on it and I think you're excellent at the action and I'm glad to see that you're planning it as well so that's that's good you got it you got it going on thank you all right Leanne let's jump over to you um, so how how do you kind of tackle your goal so that you have the things that you need in place well, I see that we have one minute left so I will <laughs> sum it up with um, huh. we're gonna go a little over time it's okay, <laughs> okay. Um, I'll sum it up with 
I basically, to know yourself. If you are a paper person, do not try and learn some new online um, schedule taskmaster thing because it will take you more time to learn it than it will to just get <laughs> organized on paper. Right. Um, so I think kind of knowing your preferences and, and, you know, maybe if you are a paper person and you want to move into technology, um, make that a part of your planning part of your progress of learning this scheduling system. Um, being a geek, it it I really give my brain over to Google and let and let Google or whatever to doist um, schedule my life. Um, and I also use the getting things done plan because that not only says what I need to do but when I'm doing it. So Tuesday from two to four I am working on this blog post. Mm -hmm. Wednesday from eight to nine I am looking up uh, WordPress plugins, whatever it is, but it's going to schedule my life so that I don't just keep pushing things off and, and never having time for it. Right. So I think those are the two quickest tips. Excellent, thank you. Great. And Melinda, I want to jump to you. What do you see going on in the chat? Julianne, Leona has clarified her question a little bit more. Okay. And, and what she's asking is how to find help and support with coaches to stay clear and supported before your business is making a lot of profitable money. So she's, she's needing support from experienced coaches, but she's tapped out from building her business and getting her certifications and taking classes and, and doing her emailing, her, her um, mail marketing. So that's what, that's what she's looking in is finding how can she find help on how to get clear on her goals Okay. Which you really can't afford a lot of professional hiring somebody at this right. point. Okay. Um, well, again, that's that's what the the groups are about. You know, I personally, I, I'm not a Facebook fan, so I, I can't speak to some good Facebook groups. But there are some excellent coaching groups. Um, if you search on LinkedIn for coaching groups, there's um, blogging for coaches, and there's coach coaches for coaches. I think it's called. Um, those are two that I spend a lot of time in because you can put a question out there and you'll get tons of support. Um, and then the group that I, the new group, the Women Helping Women group, that is all we're there for is to help one another do these things. And I'm going to put this mastermind out there so that everybody can kind of jump in who wants one. Um, so you, you can find help. You just need to reach out to other coaches who want to, they're either one or two spots. Either they are like you and they're looking and they're struggling with some of these same issues or they're accomplished and they're ready to give back. They're at that point in their life where they're, they can look and say, this is all the, the stuff I went through and I can shortcut this and really help somebody move forward and they feel that uh, need to con contribute back to their community. So you'll find that um, definitely on LinkedIn because it tends to be more professional and a little less you know, recipe exchange, I guess. Um, so that is definitely one way. If you are certified through a school, you can always go back to some of your classmates informally. And I've always found that when you ask someone personally, don't just send out a mass message, but actually send a personal message to someone. I need help. Would you be interested in? Can you chat with me for a few minutes? If it's a personalized thing, you'll get a much better response than if you just throw out something on your, your Facebook stream, hey, I need help. Anybody want to help? you don't get that same response. So personal invitations and looking for groups where it is kind of already behind the scenes where you can be, you can let your guard down and be vulnerable. Those are the two best resources. Um, anyone else on the panel want to throw out some resources as well? Yeah, I would say that a lot of coaches have like free um, sessions. I would, you know, take advantage of the free sessions and then a lot of times they have uh, free downloads where they give tips. Uh, I know I do video video chats. I have a free ebook. I have a free audio, a free coaching session. You can do that with multiple coaches. That way you can see who's a, a fit for you. And then once you get through all of that, then you can decide, okay, I want to, by the time you decide, then maybe you'll have the resources to go ahead and uh, get into a, pro a coaching program or a training session. That's what I did, and I, I did um, invest in a few training programs and a few coaching programs, but I had to at least make sure that these people were going to give me the, the resources and the tools and the things that I needed to grow. Great. And anyone else in our group? 
Well, one other thing that I've found is podcasts are awesome, and there are so many out there. Um, I like Hal Elrod. He's one I listen to a lot. Um, he does a kind of a how to set your goals and how to achieve things in your lifestyle. Um, but there are so many quality ones out there, so fish around. Um, TED Talks is another great place to get some ideas and some inspiration. So use there are free resources. You just have to seek them out. Um, they are out there. So start there and just start finding some people that you can communicate with on a regular basis that will really um, help you. So Melinda, what uh, can you catch us up? How are things going? Okay, so Sandy chimes in. I'm a certified QSCA coach, and if you go to the QSCA website, you can find some free coaching sessions. Sandy, if you can type in what is QSCA, that's not a term I've heard of before. Great. Yes, yeah, so if we can get that out, that would be great. Um, so I know we're a little bit over time, so let me just look real quick. I think... Um, just want to look at the slides that we have here. So I think you will, we'll go here to wrap up. So um, again, this Women Helping Women community is my goal for the year is to really launch this as a collaboration site, a place where you can go and ask questions like this, start conversations like this. Um, this series, this Hangout series is also um, brand new and each month we have a different topic that we're going to discuss and again it's a place for you just to share ideas, throw out questions, get help, maybe you'll meet somebody on one of these that you can then have a connection with afterwards um, and continue the conversation. Again I will throw out the um, mastermind uh, thread on the, in the same group so you'll come on in if you're not already a member join it now um, you can find it on the Women Helping Women community on my website and there's no cost. This is just a way to get you all together in a place where we can share and really learn from one another, which is my mission for the year. Um, so I'll we'll throw it over to you, Melinda, so we can do some quick wrap-up and um, thank our guests for being here and spending all that time with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julianne, for taking the time out of your day to come in and share your expertise and facilitate this conversation with us. And your, our viewing audience, thank you so much for taking time to come in and contribute to the discussion as well. And I hope that you took a lot of good takeaways from today's conversation on how to set goals and making a solid plan for 2015. The purpose of this webinar, like Julianne said, is to build community among solopreneur women, foster lively discussions about business topics, and then continue those discussions in Julianne's LinkedIn group. So if you've enjoyed yourself here today and found the experience valuable, I'd like you to do a few things to show your appreciation to Julianne. First of all, go to the Google event page under Julianne's Google Plus account for this webinar and just leave a comment telling us what you liked best about the webinar, what the biggest takeaway was. Then go into Julianne's Women Help and Women group and you see the you saw this link to that group on one of the previous screens. Once you're in, keep the conversation going, and that's the biggest thing. Keep the conversation going about what your plans are and what progress you're making to achieve them, and throw out the challenges and let the other women in the community help you. Next month, we hope to see you all back here again when Julianne hosts her next webinar on the topic of bookkeeping and how that relates to setting your fees. Our guest speaker will be Tracy Collins from Collins Bookkeeping to talk about keeping books. After four years of keeping books in corporate America, Tracy decided to start her own business to relieve small business owners of the burden and confusion of that task. Tracy takes pride in having strict confidentiality procedures in place so her clients know that their financial information is kept private at all times. It's going to be very interesting, and I hope to see you all next month. Have a great rest of your day. And I just want to add my personal thanks to everybody for coming on and uh, especially Leanne, Susan, and Siobhan for sharing your insights and everybody who participated in the chat. I, I do appreciate that. Um, and as I said, this is a series going forward. So uh, in addition to the how to set your fees and how to keep track of good books, we've got a course, how to create a course is one of the topics coming up. I do want to have one on how to um, create your social or your, your membership club because that seems to be a very lively discussion we're having over um, in LinkedIn. And we're also going to touch base with how to outsource and how to use a, a VA. So Melinda's been a great uh, resource for me on this 
this episode and how to do a, a webinar. But there are there's other people too that you, you really want to look at virtual assistants and how they can help you. Definitely feel free to reach out to Melinda on her other services. But th those are just some of the topics that we have coming up. So if you have topic ideas, please throw them out into the Women Helping Women group. You know, we're happy to get them on. Um, and I love to see ideas like this mastermind come together. So that's um, what this group's all about. So thank you, everyone, for making it happen. I appreciate it. I'm glad we didn't have any major technical glitches. I think that's awesome. Um, so I just want to sign off um, and wish everybody a happy Sunday, and we will talk to you all soon. Thank you again so much to everybody for coming in and spending your Sunday with us. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks. Great to meet you all. You too. Yes. You too. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye now.